Paul Watson's a savvy guy. I hired him 13 years ago when he was running PropagandaMatrix.com. He's done a great job for us. And he uh, does a lot of research just like I do. And I really respect his view of all the analysts we interview. He's one of the smartest out there and, and most read. So I want to bring him on right now from London via video Skype. Paul, what is your gut before we get into your latest article on what's going on? For me, this just verifies yet again that at press conferences this is rigged and that this is a Forbes writer admitting they've agreed to cover up. And, and, and I wonder if he'll get in trouble for exposing the cover up because he definitely put that at the end uh, so that he didn't get in too much trouble but still tried to warn people. Clearly, we're going to try to get him on the show. Well, I mean, Alex, what does it say about freedom of the press when, you know, this happened one week before the election? Ebola, in terms of a national news story, completely dropped off the radar. There were still suspected cases all over the country because people send them to me every single day. Yet nationally, it completely dropped off the picture. I mean, you've got an administration that's the most hostile to media since Nixon. And now we found out that this, this order went out from the Obama administration to the media, telling them not to report on suspected Ebola cases in the United States. It happens one week before an election. And as he said, it's, it's buried. It's the, the last paragraph of this Forbes article, which came out a few days ago. Um, we were probably one of the first to report it this morning. And it says that the Associated Press and other press outlets have agreed not to report on suspected cases of Ebola. Stay there. I want to get your take States. on where you see this is going. We're going to try to get this rider on. This just confirms, trouble confirms what we already knew. So your headline should probably be Obama administration caught ordering media not to report on Ebola. I mean, that's really, I mean, we knew that was going on. They've told the police, the firefighters, everybody to cover up. But, but now this just triple confirms it. I was downtown this morning taking care of business, and I ran into two different groups of police officers two different times. And both groups of police officers ran over and shook my hand and said, appreciate the work you're doing. One group was two Hispanic officers. The other group was a black and white officer. And I just cannot believe how awake the police are. It's amazing. And even though you can say that the Austin Police Department was doing their job when they caught somebody here plotting to kill me, who then ran back to California and killed a cop. I still do owe him because he was there waiting to kill me and they caught him but couldn't prosecute him. And I couldn't be told about it until it was all over. It's just, it's just really weird that, um, that even when somebody's just doing their job, then you're indebted. And then that turns into the whole subject of How do we remove this big criminal globalist group that's in control of our federal government and try to get this country back on track? Because we've got so many good people inside the military, the police, uh, the, the, the firefighters, the, the, the nurses, the doctors. What you think of as the system, by and large, is good people, but it's the directives that are bad. It's those in control. And I know we all know this, so why can't we fix it? That's what I'm trying to get at. The American people, by and large, are good people. Unless you're talking about young, spoiled uh, college students, and a lot of them are awake, or they're completely dumbed down. It's just not going to work anymore to call people conspiracy theorists when they question the system that's known to be lying. I didn't mean to digress there. It's just that America is waking up, and it's accelerated. And the accelerated awakening, the tip of that, is in government itself. So that's got to worry the establishment. That's why we know the NSA focuses its spying on local, county, and state, and federal government as well to try to keep them in line from exposing the larger program. Paul Watson's our guest coming up. Obama vows to proceed with executive amnesty for illegals. What landslide? Obama threatens vetoes and executive orders, including immigration reform this year. I love how they call treason immigration reform. Just totally open it up to anybody. After Americans reject him by giving Republicans historic gains in Congress. Paul, this is a short segment. You'll be with us in the next, and we'll go to phone calls. But let's go ahead and uh, get back into Ebola. Uh, for those that just joined us, this is a big deal to have a major Forbes writer, who's also a pharmacologist, there and said, oh, well, you know, we agreed, and, and the AP and others agreed, not to report on what appears to be Ebola cases. That confirms what Dr. Lorenzi said here three weeks ago.
and is now battling to keep his job over uh, when we've already confirmed it with other doctors that won't go on record. I mean, is America this cowardly uh, that people won't blow the whistle? Cops day one told us they've been ordered to cover it up. Firemen day one told us. And then a doctor and then another doctor and then another doctor. But other than that, you would think people wouldn't go along with this, Paul. What type of country do we live in? Well, you're living in a country with state-controlled media. I mean, look what Anita Dunn said, the former White House communications director. Very rarely did we communicate through the press anything that we didn't absolutely control, she told Dominican officials. So they openly admit that they control the press. There's a headline last year, White House photographers mutiny over Obama's Soviet-style controls. They weren't even allowed to take photos of Obama at these White House events. Everything had to be authorized and done in-house. They complained that it, it was a Soviet-style control over the media. And then you've got these White House pull reports, which the White House can edit and exercises its power to do so on a regular basis before they're sent out to news outlets, federal agencies, and congressional offices. So they've got such tight control over the media now that the Associated Press and others just just acquiesced immediately and said, yes, we'll do whatever you say regarding Ebola. And it's worse wow. than that. Uh, CNN, others have been caught, AP as well. They'll edit his speeches to make them sound better when he messes up on a teleprompter without the White House even telling him. Oh, yeah. White House court doctoring transcript of Obama's speech. They take out things which are embarrassing. They take out errors when it's supposed to be a verbatim transcript every time. Again, brazenly lying to the American people. And so, you know, we had a poll back in October, the middle of October. Half of Americans don't believe the federal government is telling the truth about Ebola. And with very good reason, because behind the scenes, as you mentioned earlier, we're getting contacted by UPS managers saying that they're sending a quarter of a million hazmat suits to Dallas, to Dallas alone. So now you've got this flu season coming up. You've got top experts like the former FDA official who also wrote in Forbes that there are going to be a spate of cases in major American cities. You've got other scientists saying there are going to be over 130 cases of Ebola in American cities. And then you've got the flu season where people are going to be reporting Ebola-like symptoms, and that's going to get confused. Let's with talk about influence. the hysteria that's going to come, especially when government lied about this up front. That will create total distrust. And that's 130 cases on the low-end computer models. Some models show thousands of cases. Stay with us. The ACDC drummer Phil Rudd has been charged in New Zealand with attempting to procure murder, threatening to kill and possession of drugs. So stupid. What, you think you're in the political mafia like Obozo, Eric Holder, where that guest can get away with murder? In Benghazi and Fast and Furious? Yeah, those are the real dirty deeds. You know, I think if you're going to kill somebody, you better do it yourself. Uh, someone's trying to hire people to do it. I read that in a book somewhere. Why on earth would you run around as a celebrity and try to hire people to kill folks for you? Nine times out of ten, it's an informant. It's made up. Besides, why would you want to kill somebody? Because these rich people, the, the, these, these high-profile stars and folks, constantly are trying to get people killed and do get people killed routinely because they're on such power trips they think they're invincible. Well, they're they, need, they need to follow O.J.'s example. Huh? Yeah, O.J. did the job himself. Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. And then they ran on race to cover it up, and that didn't work still. I was told by a LAPD detective that it was really somebody else in the family, but that OJ took the fall to cover it up. People do anything for their kids. Okay, let's just stop right there. Uh, low profile New York City prosecutor, we're going back to Watson. Low profile New York City prosecutor emerges as contender to be first black woman U.S. Attorney General. Well, I, I don't care if she's a black woman, but what I do care about is that she comes from a very corrupt area in New York uh, where U.S. attorneys have been caught doing all sorts of political persecution of Republicans, Libertarians, Christians, churches. In fact, I've seen this lady's name before going after tea parties. So the big news here, this is from Fox News, and that she's being looked at. If our writers want to dig into her, I remember her office uh, being uh, mentioned in some of the... Tea Party, pro-lifer, 
uh, harassment of 501c3s and things. And it's right next door to the one that went after Dinesh D'Souza. And I think her office aided in that. I'm going from memory, but look into it. Look into it. She's a she's a attack dog uh, from what I know. So let's research that. She's an under-the-radar contender to become the first black woman to head the Justice Department. Loretta Lynch rarely holds a news conference, does interviews or gives speeches in her current job as U.S. attorney in Brooklyn. Oh, think U.S. attorneys in Brooklyn might be a little uh, dirty under the fingernails? I don't know. Think, think Al Capone might have been a gangster? I don't know. But the lack of a paper trail on Lynch hasn't kept her from emerging in recent weeks. That's why they want her. Perfect puppet. As one of only a handful of people still under consideration by White House to replace the outgoing Eric Holder. I don't know what Fox is talking about. There's no paper trail on this lady. I remember that district office going after people. All right, we're going to dig into her, give you more on that. You know, Paul, it's really scary, <laughs> not just that our own government, you mentioned other Forbes articles and AP articles saying they expect over 100 Ebola cases. Obama's getting people ready saying, oh, I expect to see some more, but it's no big deal. We get demonized saying that clearly they're covering it up. That is so newsworthy, Paul, that they're disappearing people. Notice the hospital didn't challenge the medical doctor we had on. They didn't say he was a liar or we were wrong. They just they just demonized Infowars and, and said that we're horrible people, but but didn't counter any of the information. Uh, and they had White House connected groups like Media Matters attack us. Will we lose credibility when more Ebola cases show up, or will they lose credibility, Paul? Well, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it, Alex? We talked to Zach Taylor, the Border Patrol veteran, who said they were disappearing people. And that's the point that Scott Gottlieb made in his editorial for Forbes about a week ago. He said that once it hits Latin America, then, you know, all bets are off, basically. Quote, as we have seen with the anxiety engendered by just a few isolated cases, if we were to have a dozen or more cases in a major U.S. it would have a substantial impact on our economic and social life. And he's talking about the immigrants coming in from Latin America with Ebola, which is interesting because there's a story up on Drudge right now. Amazing story. A beach in Gran Canaria. Basically, this boatload of people from Sierra Leone with Ebola symptoms just arrived on the beach. They dumped them out of the boat and they were sat around on the beach as these nudist beachgoers <laughs> and fled. And then the government left them there for seven hours, not knowing what to do. So you've got immigrants just turning up on beaches in Gran Canaria with Ebola symptoms from Sierra Leone. And as the former FDA official said in Forbes, that could just as easily happen uh, coming into America from Mexico. Well, that's what the head of Southcom said months after we said it. And then we were attacked. And so was the head of Southcom for saying the obvious. That's another thing. The government can't coordinate its bull. You've got this czar who orders the media to shut up. They go along with it. But uh, the police and the and, and Northcom and other groups are not going along with the cover-up. I mean, I don't care what city it is. Dallas, New York City, the police aren't going along with the cover-up. Northcom's not going along with it. The head of Southcom is not going along with it. Uh, what does that mean? It shows Obama is not, is not in control, which is actually a good thing. Yeah, and remember they also told the 9-11 dispatchers in New York not to mention cases of Ebola. But what worries me, you mentioned Ron Klein before, who of course said there were too many people in Africa, he's an advocate of population reduction, is the fact that this story, which I put out probably about 10 days ago now, NGO envisages global one-child policy pandemics to solve overpopulation. And this paper, which I read in full, was edited by Paul Ehrlich, who of course is a close ally, scientific ally of John P. Holdren, the White House science czar. He co-authored EcoScience with Holdren, which, of course, advocated a planetary regime to enforce draconian methods of population reduction. And if you read this paper, it's absolutely shocking because they basically make the point that a new global war, a new type of Spanish flu and a new pandemic, which kills six billion people over the next three decades or so, is not going to be enough. They lament the fact that six billion dead people 
when the population gets to about 9 billion by 2050, is not going to be enough uh, for what they want. So they advocate openly a global one-child policy, as is instituted in China, which of course- But that's okay, Paul, because these people are just- Paul, that's okay. These people are just kooks. They're not White House science czars. They don't sit on the National Academy of Sciences. They don't sit on the major boards of the Fortune 100. They're not running global policy. Oh, wait a minute. They are running global policy from geoengineering to immigration to the Ebola response. And as you said, this isn't eco-science written 40 years ago by John P. Holdren and Paul R. Ehrlich saying this this was written this year they are saying the same thing but saying a global war is needed and now mainstream news is saying a new cold war is beginning with russia yeah but that's the thing alex they a new global war and a pandemic which kills six billion that's not enough for them six billion's not enough dead people because it will only get the population down to about five billion the global one child policy if it's properly enforced which you know in China means kidnapping women off the streets, forced drugging them, beating them half to death, giving them an abortion, a forced abortion, then sterilizing them. That's, that's what they want for everyone. Sure. That will get the population down to about 3 billion. So 4 billion down on what it is now. That's, that, even that's not enough. If you read the actual paper, they want it, they want it down to 1 to 2 billion. Those are, the, those are the ideal figures for global population. And by the way, we have a lot of TV viewers and radio listeners out there. Because again, if you're a new radio listener, we also simulcast at Infowars.com forward slash show, PrisonPlanet.com forward slash show. We'll put your article from a few weeks ago up on screen, and then we'll click through to the actual public document uh, put out by the former White House science czar who works with the current White House science czar, uh, John P. Holdren, uh, Paul R. Ehrlich. Give folks for radio audience out there the headline on your story so they can go read it for themselves. The headline is NGO envisages global one child policy pandemics to solve overpopulation. And that's the National Academy of Sciences. They published the paper. They, they put it behind a paywall so like you have to pay $10 just to read it, which they know that the vast majority of people are not going to do. I read it and it, it says that the quote sustainable number of people for the world is one to two billion people. So that's that's, you know, at least six billion down on current figures. And by the time we get to nine billion in 2050, you know, it's, it's seven billion people dead, but not as a result of pandemics because they actually modeled it. And they, they do a nice, cute little graphic with a skull and crossbones with six billion dead people mapped out on a chart. And it shows that it only gets population down to about five billion, which is not enough for them. So they need a global one child policy, which they openly advocate and say, yeah, it's going to be, quote, politically sensitive. It might have to be draconian. And that's what they advocate to get population down to three point four five billion uh, by the end of this century, or actually by 2045. So you know what? That sooner. story you did didn't get enough attention. I want you to repost that as a tile on prisonplanet.com and infowars.com and tweet that out on my tweet, on my Twitter and your uh, Twitter, or my tweeter as a former governor uh, of Texas, uh, Rick Perry would call it. Send that out because this is important. People need to see this directly from the leaders of our scientific community, how they're going to kill 90 plus percent of us and how they're going to start world wars and pandemics to do it. And then we go, gee, they've got bioweapons labs in Africa. And gee, they admit they created airborne Ebola to kill black people. Gee, could this be that? Oh, how dare you, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, crazy man. It just doesn't work anymore. People understand what's going on. Paul Joseph Watson, what else are you working on right now for Infowars.com? I'm thinking that I probably should actually make a video about this academic paper because I was going to do so at the time. Then it got no attention when I put the article out, so I just dropped it. But I mean, the fact about it is that, again, Ehrlich has been proven wildly inaccurate time and time again, yet he's still cited as this supreme authority. If you actually look at the population demographics, even in places like Brazil and India, they're starting to gradually fall. Of course, in many European countries like Russia, the government are literally begging people to have children, giving them financial incentives. And actually, after 2050, the major problem is going to be underpopulation. And all the sober evidence points to that. Well, Paul, uh, then uh, you've got people like Ehrlich who control Holdren in the White House saying that, no, it's going to get completely out of control, despite the fact that he's been proven wrong time and time again. And they're saying we need a global one child policy. And it's 
most people are never going to see this because you have to pay ten dollars and it's a dry academic you know 16 page paper they're not going to read it well it's a regurgitation of what they said thousands of times and, and the word is getting out on it paul now, that's why people weren't that interested in your paper because it's like oh the elite want to kill everybody and have a global government to do it oh i already know that let's move on yeah we need to get the word out on this folks and warn people because that's what the fluoride and the gmo and all of it is about they're doing it to everybody they just soft kill westerners because they want you to waddle off and die 20 years later but in africa and places they hit them and hit them hard and some of you are like well there are too many people you can't morally get away from that, that it'll come back on you as well. It's just, it, it, it is total evil. It's all about control. If they just industrialize these countries, they'll stop having as many kids. The, all the numbers, all the graphs, all the actuaries show it. Paul Watson, thank you so much. Thanks, Alex.